Don't worry, it's not all gonna be bad. There are some bad areas of Las Vegas that you want to stay out of, and I mean bad. One minute, you could be walking out of a beautiful, multi-billion dollar property, and then the next thing you know, BAM! A short walk brings you to one of several areas that have higher crime, lots of police activity, and worse. This neighborhood right here at the north end of the strip is called Naked City. So we are at the very tip of the north end of the strip here by the Strat, also by the Sahara, also by the Bonanza gift shop that you'll see on Las Vegas Boulevard and Sahara Avenue. The name comes from this neighborhood being decades old when a lot of the workers on the strip, particularly the showgirls, used to live back here. And it was called Naked City because they would sunbathe out naked by the pools. Now today, I don't think there's a single operating swimming pool in this neighborhood. If you go around and you look, you'll see lots of places that used to be swimming pools have now been filled in with rocks or they've been completely closed off and nobody can use them anymore. Let's go into some of these alleyways just to give you an idea of the condition that this neighborhood is in. Now, unfortunately, you will see no shortage of trash throughout the neighborhood, as well as numerous temporary makeshift homes for the local homeless in the area. And across from the street from the Strat is the Aztec Inn, where the cashier is protected by bulletproof glass. Some people will tell you that they think this is the worst neighborhood in the entire valley, but if you talk to a longtime local, they will actually tell you that it is way better today than it was back in the 90s. This alleyway I'm walking down right now in Naked City is one that you probably will never ever want to come down, especially at night, like right now. This 7-Eleven here on the right is one place that you will frequently see police activity. So you guys can see right here, right in the shadow of the Strat, this 7-Eleven, daytime, nighttime, doesn't matter you will frequently see police over here in this area. I've seen it numerous times, different times a day. So I'll take you guys down this way. So if you guys just go straight ahead this way, you'll run into the strap right up here on your left. If you look down out this way, you can see here we are so close to the strip. Some of these major properties, multi-billion dollar properties next to this neighborhood. Naked City is not all bad and doom and gloom or things like that. And there are several bright spots that are worth a mention here. So this part of Naked City, we're gonna take a look at this artwork here. I hope you guys can hear me well because we got a helicopter flying overhead right now, circling the neighborhood. All right guys, the helicopter was indeed too loud and it is a representation of just how this neighborhood can't catch a break with the elevated crime. The artwork here was put in just a few years ago. According to a local neighbor, a realtor who bought some of the properties in the area paid someone $1,500 to make this mural. You can see from some of the writing here, it says respect. It looks like the artist's name was Sean Keith, and they painted here that it was established in 1950, meaning that Naked City is decades old. The next bright spot that I want to mention is the community center. Lots of people have no idea that this place is here. They actually do a lot of cool things for the neighborhood. They have their own library in there. They have a preschool. They got a basketball court, a fitness center. They teach classes for people who want to learn English. They help immigrants obtain their citizenship and they have all sorts of after school programs for kids. Right across from the community center is a cool neighborhood park where kids and families can spend some time playing on the jungle gyms, slides, and swings. There's even a soccer field where the sports folks can watch a game or two. Some really cool artwork surrounds the park and you can get a pretty cool view of the Strat. One cool thing I'll show you guys over here in Naked City at nighttime is actually the food trucks that have been out here recently. There's only one tonight. It looks like a Mexican food truck. There's another one I've seen too. I think it's a uh, chicken and like seafood out here. So there's the Strat. The uh, 7-Eleven is right over there. You would just go down the street here, make a right to get to it. But right here, if you guys really don't want to do a whole lot of the uh, touristy stuff or tourist food, you prefer the more local food, small business friendly, you want to support that, you usually find a couple of food trucks here at night and oftentimes they even have tables uh, set up right along here. So you guys can come and enjoy some local food right here at the north end of the strip. So there you have it guys, Naked City is both dark and bright spots, but if you think all you have to do is just dodge a bad neighborhood like this one, think again. You might find yourself walking or driving through this next neighborhood.
interesting. All right. I am on Las Vegas Boulevard, the part that people usually don't see. I am between the Strat Hotel and Casino and Fremont Street. This is definitely an older part of town right here, and lots of people don't realize that this area in between the two big tourist spots in Vegas often has a bad reputation, and not just on Las Vegas Boulevard, but generally within a few blocks each direction as well. Now this area here is very close to the Arts District just over on Main Street, but when you're here on this part of Las Vegas Boulevard, it is nothing like the Arts District. However, this area does have a large homeless population of people who either have drug addiction, mental issues, or both. To the point that as you're walking down the street here, you may literally be stepping around or over someone's body on the sidewalk. Charleston and Las Vegas Boulevard definitely has a more sketchy vibe to it at night. At this intersection right here, one thing I've noticed is that this is the intersection I have seen numerous times where you will have homeless people coming up to your car while you're stopped here, knocking on your window to come up and ask for money. Daytime or nighttime, this is where I've seen it happen the most in the Vegas Valley. The other part to keep in mind too is, as you look down this way, you can see it's, you know, towards like the Strat, towards, you know, most of the big hotels, casinos on the Strip. You can see it's somewhat lit. You can still see some of the lights and stuff from here going south. The 7-Eleven is pretty well lit, because it needs to be. But across over this way, you have this uh, Gateway Motel here, which does not have a good reputation. You have uh, Doña Maria's Mexican Restaurant, which lots of locals actually do like. That's a popular spot. But as you come down this way, you can see between here and Fremont Street, there's not that much lighting. You have a little bit of light from some of these wedding chapels along the way, but from Charleston all the way up to Fremont, it is dark. It is not very well lit. Nothing like it is gonna be when you're actually on the strip around the big hotels and casinos. In this area, some of the bright spots of places that have been here for a long time or just some popular attractions include things like down over at Love It Frozen Custard that's been around for decades, Boston Pizza, Viva Las Arepas is a popular food spot. Zach Bagan's Haunted Museum right over here is a popular tourist attraction. So you do have some fun and cool things to do in this area. Here at the south end of the Strip, this is a part where if you come down here, you'll notice some of these older buildings that are really run down. They've got damage to them. If you remember my video I did about the five sketchiest places to stay in the Las Vegas Strip, several of them were right here at the very south end of the Strip. Now, besides the fact they're older and run down and they've been damaged, another thing to keep in mind is that at nighttime, there is almost no lighting over here. There's lighting over by the Las Vegas sign. There's lighting farther up the Strip. But to be walking this area at night with no lighting is generally not a place you want to be. I have seen people do it. I saw a family out here once when I was recording late at night with their little kids. You'll probably be okay, but it's not something I would recommend. One of the things you guys will notice at this part of the strip is you have this opening right here in the fence that goes down into the tunnel system. So if you didn't know, we do have thousands of people who live underneath Las Vegas in the tunnel system. So you have this opening here where people will come up and they can obviously come walk to the strip, walk the strip area. This building right here is incredibly abandoned. I did not even know this was here. Uh, you do have one here that people do live in, but you can see obviously the damage done to the building. There are homeless people who live in the section right here. Someone is using a, uh, used to be a dumpster area that held dumpsters for their tent, for their living situation there. So this end of the strip too is also at night. There's really no lighting down here. Now, just cause this building's abandoned doesn't mean that there's not anybody living there. So just looking from out here, I can see there's a soda bottle in there. I have no idea who might be living in there. Daytime, nighttime, I don't feel like going in and exploring any of that. But there probably are people who do live back here. 
down here there are some cool things to do. So one of them is the Las Vegas sign. You can walk right down the sidewalk here to it. The Pinball Hall of Fame, you can go to the Pinball Hall of Fame right here and actually have lots of fun for very cheap. Also, you're of course right across the street from Mandalay Bay. So if you want to go to Mandalay Bay, enjoy the things they have there, you can definitely do that. But walking this stretch right here, you will notice that this is not the prettiest site. You'll see some of the buildings here, they do have a security guard, oftentimes at places that might not have security. You see the sign on one of the souvenir shops that says no knives or weapons allowed, but they're selling knives in there that you could use as weapons. So this area, okay during the daytime, nighttime, not recommended. Right here, just a block east of the Las Vegas Strip, I am behind Cromwell, just across the street from Bally's. This is a part of the Vegas Strip area a lot of people consider to be sketchy, particularly at night. This spot right here, Stage Door Casino, has a cult-like following. The people who love this place absolutely love it, but lots of people, especially locals, will tell you that down here at night is not a place you really want to be hanging out. Stage door here has security during the day, but they have added security at night. They will use a wand, a metal detector to try to keep weapons out at night. You can see right here at this intersection on a link lane, you can see the police do have an additional surveillance camera set up here. So when you see those cameras in areas like this where they need additional surveillance, that generally tells you about the neighborhood. Just down the road from the Stage Door Casino, I'm here at the intersection of Flamingo and Koval. This is where you can find some cool things in the area or some points of interest. The first point of interest, I'm sure people are going to mention this down in the comments section, is the memorial here for Tupac where he was shot here in September of 1996. This post right here is essentially being used as a de facto memorial. I don't think I've ever seen this on a list of like things to do in Vegas or places to visit. I just heard about it through social media. So for years, people have been coming here, they've been signing it, they've been writing on it and stuff like that. Other things over here that are cool, especially if you like to do some, um, you know, bargain hunting when you're here coming to Vegas, Ellis Island Hotel and Casino, Platinum, Tuscany are all obviously within a short walk of the Strip. So if you don't mind the walk and you want to go to a place that's a better bang for your buck, you can do that. You're also near the MSG Sphere over here. At nighttime here at Flamingo and Koval, one thing you'll commonly hear people say is they feel like doing this walk from down uh, Flamingo to Koval, it's like Ellis Island or anything over here in this area. They feel like it's really sketchy. Yes, at night it's probably gonna feel more dangerous than it does during the daytime, but as you guys can see, this area of any that we've shown in this video is probably the most well lit at night. Really, if you're down Koval more like on Harmon here and you're walking from like Virgin to the Strip, that's where it's not nearly as well lit. You're actually probably safer and better off and have better lighting walking down this way than if you were to be coming down Koval and coming down Harmon. Because over down that way, you have Harbor Island apartments, which do not have a good reputation. Down Koval some more, you have some apartment buildings behind the MGM. You'll see bars in the windows. You'll see they just like run down. They don't look very nice either. And the final thing I'll say about this area right here is the fact that you will see this. It's easier to see during the daytime than at night time but if you guys remember i did the video of the two guys who were uh, drug addicts that were used to live in the tunnels underneath las vegas that were homeless for years there are numerous spots especially in this area right here where the tunnels come right up to the strip and to other casinos and hotels in the area and if someone's coming out of those tunnels the danger in that is you have no idea what kind of mental space that person is in. You don't know if they are sober, you don't know if they are high on something, you have no idea what kind of state they're in, how they're going to react to someone that they see. So just keep that in mind. In this area, you're going to come across more of those tunnels, and some of them do go right to the hotels and casinos on the Strip. This part of town right here is just two blocks east of the Las Vegas Strip. Right over there you can see the intersection of Twain and Paradise Road. This is just down the road actually from the Las Vegas Convention Center. This whole road, Twain here, especially as you go down this way, is known by a lot of locals to be a bad area. 
Twain and Swenson is the intersection lots of locals will tell you about. Swenson had its name changed to University Center Drive the last few years. But one thing you'll notice here that people ask when they move to the Vegas area and locals will tell them about bad neighborhoods. Typically when you see weekly stays, that's generally not a good sign. So as you can see here, we have an entire block of these weekly stays that people will stay in. A whole block of them here. Another one right here, Siegel Suites Twain. In this area too, you'll see lots of things like liquor stores. You'll see your abandoned buildings. You'll see your rundown, beat down buildings. You see parts that are rather dirty and lots of trash and just not very well maintained in this area. So right here, I'm at the intersection right near Twain and Swenson Plaza. I know this community is going to be an area that a lot of locals will say, hey, stay out of, don't go to it. But if you're going to come over here and check out one of the brightest spots about the area is some of the popular food choices here. Yes, we have the Vegas Strip. Yes, there's downtown. Yes, there's all kinds of famous spots in the tourist areas. But some of the best food spots here in Vegas are actually in the local areas and a place that a lot of people would tell you to stay out of. But in this spot right here, you have places that are really highly rated like La Barbacoa, Philly Frees Me, Tacos Los Toritos, Laos Thai Street Food, and Lefty J's Island Favorites. Particularly, Lefty J's is wildly popular. Believe it or not, as I stand here in this dead-end alley that's covered with garbage, I am actually just a few blocks away from some casinos here in downtown near Fremont Street that cost billions to build all those properties and hundreds of millions of dollars comes flowing through that area with tourist money every single year. Yet, I am in the shadow of a weekly stay building here, which if you're local in Las Vegas, you know when you see weekly stays, it's generally not a good sign for the neighborhood. Las Vegas Metro Police Department has one of their stations right here. The City Marshals of Las Vegas has one of their stations right here. And this part of the Vegas Valley that we're in for Las Vegas Metro is called the Downtown Area Command. This is the area, if you look at all their commands they have, has the most homicides typically in a year in Las Vegas. You guys can probably see here, I am truly just a few blocks north from Fremont Street. I am on Las Vegas Boulevard. This is still Las Vegas Boulevard at the intersection of Bonanza. So there are a few bright spots in the area here. Some of these you guys have seen in one of my videos before. One of them, this taco truck right here, Taqueria Casa del Sabor. I featured this place in a video once before. Also, just up the road, up Las Vegas Boulevard here, you will see the Neon Museum. Just past that, you can actually see the uh, stadium where the Las Vegas Lights, the local soccer team, plays their home games. But you also look around, you obviously see a strong police presence. You look at these weekly stays here, and you'll see added security and surveillance cameras on them, oftentimes with red and blue flashing lights, like you would normally see, like, you know, police surveillance cameras or police sirens would have those colors. You see those kinds of things, you know the area you're in is probably not a very good one. Standing on this pedestrian bridge here at the Cashman Center, you guys can get a good look of where I was just at at Las Vegas Boulevard and Bonanza. And you guys can definitely see downtown. You can see some of the uh, hotels. You can even see the north end of the strip that way. So we're halfway between Bonanza and the part of the Las Vegas Valley that generally has the highest concentration of homicides about a block up the road right here and that's where we're going. This is Four Master Lane. We are still on, believe it or not, Las Vegas Boulevard. If you take this street and just keep heading south, you will go all the way down the world famous strip that millions of people come to visit every year. But this part of Las Vegas Boulevard, where Four Master Lane is, for years has been known as being the worst part of the Vegas Valley. Now, as you can see, this road is closed. This used to go all the way through. You used to be able to drive right through here, but they closed this off and there have been some very good changes over here, particularly since COVID. You can see the new construction going on, new buildings being put here. This has been to try to help improve the area. Part of the reason there's a huge homeless population here, and this is where the most 
uh, the biggest concentration of homeless people is in Las Vegas is because there's numerous charities, Catholic Charities is here, there's other nonprofits here, the Fertitas have a community center here, lots of the resources to help homeless people are down here. But given the environment, given the nature of this area, this is arguably the most dangerous spot in the entire Vegas Valley. At night over here, this will actually help give you a little bit better perspective of the area because some things are actually a little easier to see from here. You guys can probably see in the distance there that little light right there, that's actually the top of Circa. You can see the very top of the Strat and maybe, uh, that might be Resorts World. You can see, but you can see a little bit of downtown and even to the Strip a little bit from here. Also right up the road, there we go. Right there, that light is Jerry's Nugget. So right as you come up Las Vegas Boulevard here, you actually get into the city of North Las Vegas. You go to Jerry's Nugget area, Palomino Strip Club, also to um, Chica's Bonita Strip Club. So this area in general does not have a good reputation. The other thing that freaks people out over here, aside from the high percentage of homelessness and the high percentage of violent crime that happens over here, the fact there's several cemeteries in the area and i'm walking past one right now and this is woodlawn cemetery which is known also for having a bad reputation and being dangerous because there's a couple others just down the road here that are open right now there's people visiting them right now but woodlawn you guys can see you look at this man you can't see crap out here i drove through here once on a live stream probably a couple years ago and you can hardly see anything so this is closed now. The gates are closed. They try to keep people out of this place, which means they're probably having uh, issues with it. But this cemetery, other cemeteries in the area, are one of the other things that prevent some people from uh, wanting to come over to this area. In this video, obviously I showed you some of the bad, but I also showed you some of the good. So when you come here on your vacation, you can take what I've shown you, take the information, make the best decision for yourself to stay safe while you enjoy yourself here in Las Vegas. Thanks for checking out this video. If you want to watch something else that's going to be helpful on your Las Vegas trip, check out this video right over here. That's it for this one. I'm Jacob. It's my life in Vegas. Thanks for watching.